Happy Halloween, Groovy Ghoulies. Tonight's story is a real gas. A man murders his brother in a fit of passion, but accidents have consequences, and his are sure to haunt them. Lucky number 13 calls this story, Pull My Finger. All right, caller, you're on the air. That morning I woke up feeling sour. No particular reason, just an unpleasant feeling the moment I opened my eyes. Outside the birds were chirping and the sun was shining, but I wasn't about to let this good day ruin a perfectly rotten mood. My brain was dead set on feeling grumpy. I stumbled into the kitchen, waving half-heartedly at my brother Brian sitting at the kitchen table and polishing off what was probably his second bowl of Fruit Loops. Morning, shit kicker. He said between bites. I ignored him and fished around the sink for a clean looking cup and settled on one of Brian's collectible Flintstone mugs, the one shaped like Barney Rubble's head, and gave it a quick rinse. By the way, I got a message for you. He got up from the table and reached into his back jeans pocket, farted into his hand, and mashed a fart hand over my face. Cup of cheese. Jerk, I said, pushing him off me. You're on your way to a whoop butt. You know I can't stand that toilet humor. It ain't refined. It ain't fit for a hardy to debase himself like that. Which was true. Our daddy Willoughby T. Hardy was the funniest man down at Jill's gas station tractor repair and sandwich shop. He grew up fixing to be a comedian, but a detour into physical comedy left him unable to talk. He'd sit me on his knee and write, Potty humor don't take no skill. Anyone can do it ain't even worth the effort it takes to push one out. And I knew he was serious because he wrote the words real big like he was yelling. Oh, I don't mean nothing by it, Brian said and sat back down. We're out of beans, I said, sifting through a cupboard filled with half-empty pancake and brown sugar bags. Weren't you supposed to get some? I've got a few right here, Brian said. He leaned to one side and cut a long fart. Well, that set me off. I whirled around and yelled, I told you I can't stand lowbrow humor. Wee's were fine. And I brought the mug down on the back of his head. There was a sharp crack, and the back of Brian's head caved in. He wobbled for a second, then fell face first into his bowl of Fruit Loops. Oh, you've done it now, Clint Hardy. You've gone and murdered your brother. Man, your folks are going to be pissed. I winced, looking from the brain-splattered Flintstone mug I held in my hand to the Barney-shaped imprint on the back of my brother's head. You sure did a number on him. Smashed his brains in good. I warned you. I told you if you didn't stop farting at, on, or around me, I'd knock your block off. Just didn't mean to knock it so hard. It's your own fault, I said to Brian. He was dead, so he didn't respond. But then, as if he was mocking me, he farted. The end-all be-all of farts. The final fart. A power blast, a wind, and whatever undigested food left inside him so strong it pooched the back of his pants. I lost my temper, and with an explosion of brains, blood, and cereal, I put another Barney-shaped dent in the top of his head. Oh, shoot! He did it again. Clint, you dumb fool. They're gonna put you away. Or worse give you a lifetime of community service. I'd be working the side of the road, picking up trash, and the neighbors would say, there goes that boy what murdered his brother. I don't think I could take the embarrassment. I fished the last Pop-Tart out of the box. It was a variety pack, and I wanted a frosted strawberry, but got plain instead. This just wasn't my day. Popping the tart in the toaster, looked out the kitchen window and ruminated on my situation. The rainy season hit us pretty hard, and somehow the well we were digging overflowed, turning our backyard into a swamp. A government fella came over and declared it a wetland, so it's protected on account of a rare fish what was living in the hole we dug. The toaster dinged, 
I didn't wait for the Pop-Tart to cool. I bit into it, burning the roof of my mouth, but the pain stimulated something in my brain, and an idea formed. Clint Hardy, you're a genius. I loaded Brian into the canoe with a large cinder block I had tied around his ankles, and pushed off. The water wasn't deep except for over the well we dug, which was more of a pit if anything else. We drifted to a stop over the hole, and doing my best not to capsize the boat, I rolled the body overboard. The cinder block shot downwards with a jerk, and in an instant sucked Brian into the darkness with it. I waved goodbye and paddled myself back to shore. Weeks went by and things were good. The trailer was cleaned for the first time in months, and I replaced the bunk bed with a fancy fold-out one. The best part was I didn't have to put up with any more potty humor. I had almost forgotten about the body in the well, until one night I woke up to the sound of splashing. I figured it was probably some kind of animal, but then the thing called my name in a long, wet, burbling moan. I heard the front door open and the sound of wet feet slapping against the floor as the thing approached my bedroom door. Clint, wake up. Your brother's home. And the door to my room creaked open. Standing in the doorway was Brian, swollen and soaked to the bone. His flesh was pale blue and half rotten. One eye bulged from a swollen socket while the other was dark and empty. Old Clint, if you ain't a sight for sore... I, he gurgled. I've got something for you. He shambled forwards until he could rest his bloated gut on the foot of my bed. The belly button, once in any, had popped outwards and looked like a blue chestnut which he thumbed at. Now, Brian, what happened was an accident. I didn't know what else to do, and you can't blame me for doing what I did and dumping you in that well out back. You know I'm too fragile for jail. That's all in the past. And I need you to do one thing for me. He hoisted himself onto my bed, his stomach pressing into my feet. He yeah? What's that? He held up a swollen, waterlogged hand and pointed at me. With a smile, he said, Pull my finger. Thanks for calling. If Clint thought Brian's farts were bad before, he's in for a surprise. Nothing beats undead farts. Trust me. What? I don't want to toot my own horn, but I did a bang-up job on these decorations. I'll say. Aren't there supposed to be little twinkling lights? No one likes a nitpick. That's it for the show. If you enjoyed it, give me a like and subscribe for more monthly spooky content. And click that little bell icon so you know when the next show is out. Happy Halloween, bloody buddies. And I'll be right here handing out candy and waiting for the next 13th caller.